Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about astrology. I want to talk about aspects in astrology, just in a, in a very general way. I did a, another video on this that's similar, but uh, I thought of another analogy to relate the aspects to and why that's really the meat of astrology. So that is to say that uh, the aspects are really the best and most accurate part of the best and most accurate personality system that there is, which I believe astrology to be. I believe that for a multitude of reasons. I think Myers-Briggs has its place in business and in fun. Um, you know, to be assigned a type can uh, do something for you as far as your, your self-awareness journey goes. Um, and it's kind of fun to talk about, like, oh, I'm an INTP, you're an INTJ, you know, uh, and, and talk about the differences and similarities, you know, between your types. And it's fun, and it can be useful, but it doesn't get to the core of how we really are. And that's because it kind of fits us in inside of a box, and all Myers-Briggs does is talk about modes of perception and modes of judgment. And that's it. It doesn't really talk about our style, our swag, um, and really the internal... Uh, struggles that we have that can hold us back through, you know, flourishing in life. Uh, but astrology has something to count to account for everything. And uh, just to dispel of uh, you know a few of the myths in astrology, signs are overrated, and so is your sun sign. In a lot of pop culture astrology, really surface level stuff, um, they they really focus on the sun. Uh, which is just one planet we call, you know, the sun, the moon, the ascendant, all of these non-planetary bodies, we call them planets in astrology. Each of them represent a different part of your personality, you know. The sun is your ego, uh, your vitality, what you kind of seek to show up as uh, to the world. Your moon is uh, your internal world, your thinking and feeling self, who you are to yourself when you're by yourself. Your Mercury is your rational linguistic expression. Your Venus is your feminine. Your Mars is your masculine, you know, and so on and so forth. And so each of these planets represents a different part of you. Um, and so that's what the planets are, right? And then the sign that they're in is really just the style in which you express that. It's your swagger, so to speak. Um, and so it's, it's no wonder that in the more fashionable, you know, expedient pop cultural circles, that is what is, uh, that's where the value is, is in that surface level analysis of sign, which is style or swagger, uh, on your ego, which is your son, you know? Uh, and that's all they talk about. And that's a very shallow analysis. We, we talk about all these complex parts of astrology, and then at the end we have to say, uh, remember, doesn't matter how accurate this seems to be, you can't make a general judgment on of a person or of yourself based on this part of your chart alone. You have to always zoom out and see how that fits in with the general picture. So you kind of study each individual part, and then you zoom out and see which patterns emerge. And that's you. No two birth charts are the same. Everyone is very unique. And there's no other personality system that really shows that like astrology does. So anyway, you have your planet. That's a part of yourself. You have the sign that it's in. That's your style that you express it in. But then you have the house. The house is that's, that pizza slice, if you will, when you're looking at the birth chart. And that is the context in life in which the planet that it's in is being expressed. So if your sun is in the 12th house, you know, you, you may have a very uh, mystical um, sort of leaning, mystical and, and spiritual leaning to your personality, not necessarily religious, but you put a lot of conscious ego energy, so to speak, into things of the metaphysical, things of the collective unconscious. And you may read a lot of books on um, mysticism and, and psychology and that sort of thing. So anyway, you know, th those are the three main parts of uh, placement that we have to keep in mind when we're talking about astrology. You have the planet, that's the part of yourself 
that we're talking about in a context. Uh, that's the house. And houses are ultimately more important than signs. Your sign is that is that swagger, your, the style that you bring to that part of yourself. Um, so there's another level of complexity, another level of depth beyond these sort of individual parts of your personality, we could say. And it's all built in. Um, these are pa- these are the aspects. Aspects are patterns that have emerged um, over thousands of years of people having these relationships between two of these planets that we're talking about that are aspected. Um, it's a relationship between two planets, two placements, two parts of yourself, which in a sense creates a new energy and a new dynamic. And then you take a step back and you look at the combination of aspects that you have. That gives you a more accurate and more detailed picture of who you actually are uh, as far as your operating system goes. That's what your personality is. It's your operating system. Um, So the analogy that I use to describe uh, an aspect in astrology is consciousness itself. Um, consciousness is not in your brain and it's not out there in the world. Consciousness is the relationship between you and the world. Um, consciousness is a relationship on, on a lower level between you and another person. Um, you may be one way by yourself. That person may be one way by themselves. When you come together, a new energy is created, whether it's for better or for worse, whether it's harmonious and, and loving and, uh, and fun, or whether it's volatile and toxic and poisonous, you know? Um, and, and that tells you something about how you should manage it, you know? Uh, but aspects are like consciousness, whereas, you know, consciousness is the new energy, the new, um, the new entity almost that's produced by you interacting with objective reality, you as the subject, um, that same sort of thing is going on internally in your own personality. You have one part of yourself expressed in a placement. You have another part of yourself expressed in another placement. And then the interaction between those two things creates a new energy that you have to deal with. Again, sometimes it's harmonious. Sometimes it's a conjunction. Sometimes you have, you know, your sun conjunct Mercury. So it's your ego and your, uh, and your sort of linguistic and rational explanatory mind working and working together in a similar style, in a similar context. And, uh, that sort of person, it's about, I think maybe 20% of people have, um, Sun conjunct Mercury. Um, those are the ones who are good at saying what's on their mind with um, clarity, you know. Uh, but then it may be, you know, you may have a, another aspect that is not harmonious, that causes a lot of tension. You may have an opposition. Uh, an opposition is a struggle for balance between two opposite signs from across the chart. It's a 180 degree relationship. So, if your chart is very heavy with, say, Leo placements, um, you may have uh, one planet in Aquarius across the chart, 180 degrees, that either gives you some balance or causes some great tension. Uh, but the, the goal is balance. The goal is to make those two things work together. Um, oppositions are my favorite aspects, actually, because of the balance that they create with maturity and with awareness and work, um, because opposition signs, and I, I may just make this a video a bit about opposition signs as well. You want to look at what your dominant sign is in your chart, and then look at what that, the opposite sign to that sign is. And that is going to basically give you, uh, the best route toward achieving ultimate balance in your life. If you're, uh, if your chart is heavy with Leo placements and you don't have anything else going on on the other side, Leo's your dominant sign, so to speak, dominant swag, you want to look to Aquarius, for example, uh, because that's the opposite sign, to see what it is you're lacking 
Uh, opposite signs are the perfect complements for each other. They're the perfect complements because, to speak in psychoanalytical terms, they are shadows of one another. Cancer and Capricorn couldn't seem more different, but really they express uh, yin and yang in the purest sense, you know, feminine and masculine, maternity and paternity. And um, when you have a balance between, say, those two signs, people may say to you very often, as they do to me, oh, you have like a really good balance of sort of like just masculine and feminine, yin and yang. You know what I mean? Uh, so there, there are archetypes to, um, to see in all opposing signs. But regardless, it can be a very tug-of-war relationship in opposition. A square um, is a, a harsh aspect. A square is a 90-degree relationship between two signs that are you know, in the same mode or same modality, which means that they sort of play the same roles in work and in society. Like two cardinal signs are two different uh, leaders, you know. Uh, if they're squared, like Cancer is with Aries, they're going to have very different ways of expressing their leadership energy. And therefore, they're not often going to see eye to eye because they're sort of pointed in different directions. And when you look at a birth chart, they literally are. When Aries is pointed north, Cancer is pointed west. Um, so you have to find that, that close-knit you know, place uh, in the intersection between those signs in which to, to stay if you want to remain harmonious with that squared sign. But anyway, not, not to go off on, on too much of a tangent on the particulars of the aspects. The aspects are, you know, conjunctions, oppositions, squares, uh, trines, sextiles, and in conjunct or quincunx. And then you have like the, the more minor ones that really just give you like a, a, little, a little detail about a rela relationship uh, between two signs. But those are the major aspects that you want to look at, um, especially... Uh, especially conjunction, square, and opposition. Those are the main ones. Um, and, and so, yeah, so they're like little bits of consciousness uh, within yourself. It's like a little subjective uh, interacting with the objective, like, like your conscious self does with the world. Your, your you know, subjective self does with the objective world. Um, a new energy is created when those two placements come together and interact with each other in a particular way. And then the combination, when you zoom outward and look at your whole chart, see how those um, that unique set of aspects that you have in your birth chart interact with one another, that creates the more general energy that is the totality of you. And uh, there's no other system that does it quite like astrology. You could say Big Five. You know, Big Five has aspect traits, which are two smaller, more detailed traits that each of the five cardinal traits breaks down into. Um, and But it's not laid out for you. You have to do the work yourself um, to figure out how it is that, say... You know, someone with 90, 90th percentile in openness interacts with a 50th percentile in conscientiousness. You know what I mean? In astrology, uh, there is a, a, a pattern that has already emerged in the thousands of years of studying this, um, this subject uh, that has, has surfaced and presented itself as a real entity in itself, a real energy in itself. Um, whereas in Big Five, that sort of thing isn't laid out for you, you know. Um, you really have to do the work yourself. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, that's my video today about astrology and why the aspects are important and um, why, really, if you want to get into personality and understanding yourself on the deepest and the broadest level, you want to look to astrology. But I would say just skip over all the placement stuff to begin with and go straight for the aspects. Go to say Cafe Astrology and then look at your list of aspects, whichever one has the highest orb value on that in that right uh, column is going to be your strongest aspect and then kind of go down from there. Or highest number uh, with a negative um, value on it. That would be like a square or an opposition that's very strong in your chart. So look for a big number in that right column if you go to CafeAstrology.com uh, for example, and look at the aspects and see, um, read up on those first before you even read about signs. And I guarantee 
that that those or the combination of those say top three, you know, highest valued aspects will be the most accurate description of you that you've ever read because it's just how it is and astrology is the best and that's just how it is. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.